Hello everyone! We noticed that a large number of you guys watch our videos without subscribing, so what's stopping you? Click here to stay updated with our latest nerdy content. And back to the video. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another ATP video. Today we'll be talking about a clinically important bug that is often tested in many exams. Please welcome Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is also known as pneumococcus, is a gram-positive, lancet-shaped bacterium, meaning that it has an oval shape with somewhat pointed ends rather than being round. The bacteria are usually found in pairs, and that's why they're called diplococci. Diplo from two, basically. It's a common inhabitant of the respiratory tract, and one very important thing to remember about Streptococcus pneumoniae is that it's the most common cause of community-acquired pneumonia. This was just a very brief introduction about strep pneumo. Now let's move on and talk about its important features. Streptococcus pneumoniae is a facultative anaerobe. They are alpha hemolytic, meaning that on blood agar, they oxidize hemoglobin into meth hemoglobin, producing the striking greenish or brownish color. However, this color is not solely produced by Streptococcus pneumoniae. It's actually produced by all alpha hemolytic streptococci. So how can we differentiate Streptococcus pneumoniae from other bacteria that produces alpha hemolysis? The answer is quite easy. First, the growth of Streptococcus pneumoniae is inhibited by optogen, hence they are optogen sensitive, and they're lysed by bile as well. Both features help differentiating Streptococcus pneumoniae from other alpha hemolytic streptococci. Another important characteristic of Streptococcus pneumoniae is that they are encapsulated bacteria meaning that they possess polysaccharide capsules that interfere with phagocytosis. And in fact, this capsule is one of the most important virulence factors, which is what we are going to discuss now. Let us start by talking about pneumolysin, which is the hemolysin that causes alpha hemolysis and may also contribute to pathogenesis of the organism. Another important virulence factor is IgA protease that enhances the organism's ability to colonize the mucosa of the upper respiratory tract by cleaving IgA. The bacteria also exhibits lipotechoic acid, which activates, complement, and induces inflammatory cytokine production. This can contribute to the inflammatory response and the septic shock syndrome that occurs in some immunocompromised patients. And last but not least is the capsular polysaccharide that resists phagocytosis and favors the invasiveness of the organism. It's worth mentioning that there are certain factors that predispose persons to pneumococcal infection, and those include anticerebral impairment that can depress the cuff reflex and increase aspiration of secretions, any abnormality of the respiratory tract that disturb the integrity and movement of mucociliary apparatus, abnormal circulatory dynamics such as pulmonary congestion and heart failure, removal of the spleen, which is known as splenectomy, and lastly, certain chronic diseases such as sickle cell anemia, these patients auto-infarct their spleen and become functionally asplenic, and that predisposes them to pneumococcal infections. Now let us talk about how streptococcus pneumoniae is transmitted. This mainly occurs by one of two ways, either direct person-to-person -person contact via respiratory droplets or via auto-inoculation in persons carrying the bacteria in their upper respiratory tract. Pneumococci are a prominent cause of MOPS, which stands for meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. They are also cause of sepsis in asplenic patients and those with sickle cell anemia, and they are known to cause a wide variety of diseases that include the upper respiratory tract and other organs as well. Although we've just mentioned that streptococcus pneumonia can cause a wide variety of diseases, we'll be talking about pneumococcal pneumonia since it's the most common clinical presentation of pneumococcal disease. Symptoms generally include an abrupt onset of fever and chills. Other common symptoms include pleuritic chest pain, which is chest pain that increases with breathing, productive cough with rusty sputum, dyspnea, which is shortness of breath, and general weakness. In fact, the CDC estimates that 150,000 hospitalizations from pneumococcal pneumonia occur annually in the United States. Streptococcus pneumonia can also cause meningitis, and it's important to know that Streptococcus pneumonia has become the leading cause of bacteria meningitis among children 
younger than five years of age in the United States. So how can we diagnose patients with streptococcus pneumonia? The answer is that we have various ways to do so. First, the organism can be detected in the sputum as lancet-shaped gram-positive diplococci using gram stain. And secondly, on blood agar. As we've mentioned, pneumococci form small alpha hemolytic colonies. These colonies are bile-soluble and their growth is inhibited by optogen. Blood and cerebrospinal fluid cultures can be done, which also will aid in the diagnosis. There are some rapid tests that can detect streptococcus pneumoniae, and these include latex agglutination test that detects the capsular polysaccharide in the CSF of patients with pneumococcal meningitis. Another rapid test is the urinary antigen test, which can detect pneumococcal antigens in patients with pneumonia and bacteremia. We've mentioned earlier in this video that streptococcus pneumonia is a gram-positive bacterium. Therefore, the first drug that comes to our minds when we think of pneumococcal infection case is penicillin. However, this is not the way it should be for a few reasons. First of all, increasing numbers of strains resistant to penicillin have emerged. Thus, antibiotic sensitivity tests must be done on organisms, especially those isolated from serious infections. And second of all, some patients are allergic to penicillin. Now, after mentioning these two important points, we can elaborate more on the treatment. Usually, pneumococci are susceptible to penicillins and erythromycin. And in patients allergic to penicillin, erythromycin can be used. However, in cases where significant resistance to penicillin is present, vancomycin or ceftriaxone will be the drugs of choice. Now we've discussed everything about streptococcus pneumonia. The question is, how can we prevent it? There are two available vaccines. The first one is a 13 valent pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. The immunogen in this vaccine is the pneumococcal polysaccharide of the 13 most prevalent serotypes, conjugated to a carrier protein, which is diphtheria toxoid. And the second type is the unconjugated 23 valent pneumococcal vaccine, also known as Pneumovax 23. Please keep in mind that the conjugate vaccine triggers an IgG response, while the unconjugated one triggers an IgM response. However, a potential problem regarding the use of these pneumococcal vaccine is that they don't include all the serotypes, meaning that the vaccine will only reduce the incidence of the disease caused by the serotypes in the vaccine but not the overall incidence of other serotypes that are not in the vaccine. All right, we've reached the end of our video. Now let us sum up the points that we have discussed today. So we talked about streptococcus pneumoniae. We've said that they are gram-positive, alpha-hemolytic, lancet-shaped diplococci. They are optogen-sensitive and bile-soluble, and that's how they are differentiated from other alpha-hemolytic streptococci. Streptococcus pneumoniae has many virulence factors, including capsular polysaccharide and IgA protease. They are transmitted either directly via respiratory droplets or via auto-inoculation, and they cause a wide variety of diseases. They can be detected using different ways, such as gram staining, culturing, and some other rapid tests. And finally, there are two available vaccines, the 13-valent pneumococcal conjugate vaccine and the unconjugated 23-valent pneumococcal vaccine. And that's it for Streptococcus pneumoniae. We hope you found it beneficial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive our latest updates. And as always, thanks for watching.